Good morning, good morning, and a very, very warm welcome to you. Good morning on this beautiful, beautiful Sunday morning. Now this morning is quite unusual, we have a different preacher in church, um, and they'll be preaching one thing and I'll be preaching another. I don't really want them around here. Um, but to avoid direct comparisons of preaching styles, today I'm going to share two different Old Testament passages. So we're going to have a very different Old Testament passage at the first service than we might at the second. And so the nine o'clock reading will be from Exodus and our 10.30 reading will be taken from Psalms. But at both services, but at both services, I think the uh, illustration that I'm going to use, which talks about heavenly power, is absolutely the same and wholly appropriate. And such is my limited repertoire. <laughs> Am I going to be on my best behaviour today because we have a visitor? Nah, of course not. <laughs> I'm never on my best behaviour. So Moses and Jesus and one other were playing a nice threesome of golf. They were playing a nice threesome of golf at the South Beds Golf Club. Moses came up to the tee and he drove a nice long shot and the ball landed on the fairway but started rolling down towards the water hazard. Quickly Moses raised his club high in the air, he raised it high in the air and the water in the water hazard parted and the ball strolled through safe and sound. Next, Jesus strolled up to the tee and he hit a nice long ball. I know nothing about golf, but he, I know he hit a nice long ball, but it went towards the same water hazard. And as it was going to land in the water hazard, Jesus walked over, it, the ball hovered on top. Jesus walked upon the water and he just chipped the ball on to the green. Finally, the third member of the group got up to the tee and he whacked the ball and it headed over the fence and it landed in the oncoming traffic. It bounced off a van, it bounced off a car, it bounced off a milk float, it bounced back into the golf club. It went up upon the golf club roof, it rolled down the roof into the gutter, rolled down the gutter and it went to the fairway straight towards the aforementioned water hazard. On the way to the pond it hit a stone and it landed on a lily pad. A great big frog jumped out and took the ball in his mouth and started to hop away. Suddenly a red kite swooped down and picked up the frog and he flew around the golf course with the frog in his mouth. He squeezed upon the frog and the frog gave a little yelp and he dropped the ball onto the green and it landed right in the cup for a hole in one. And Moses turned to Jesus and said, do you know what, I hate playing golf with your dad. <laughs> I'd like that. <laughs> and so back to the real world. <laughs> and let's have our first hymn today. And our first hymn today is Guide Me O Thou Great Redeemer. One, 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 eight. Good morning. One, one, eight. Good morning. <clears throat> Guide me, O Thou Great Redeemer, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty, hold me with thy powerful hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me now and evermore. Feed me now and evermore. Open now. The crystal fountain whence the healing stream doth flow. Let the fiery cloudy pillar lead me all my journey through. Strong deliverer, strong deliverer, be thou still my strength and shield. Tread the verge of Jordan, is my anxious fear subside. Death of death and hell's destruction, land me safe on Canaan's side. Songs of praises, songs of praises, 
I will ever give to thee. I will ever give to thee. That's fantastic. Oh, well, I did show you that actually in anticipation of Wales beating uh, France yesterday, but as, as I'm sure you all know, they didn't. So uh, just getting ready, getting ready for next year. <laughs> And so the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's say together our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only son Jesus Christ to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. And so let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, to our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. And so, Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we continue in worship as we say together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Faithful Lord, whose steadfast love never ceases, and whose mercies never come to an end, Grant us the grace to trust you and to receive the gifts of your love, new every morning. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now Rosie's going to bring us the first of our readings. The reading is taken from Exodus 14, beginning at verse 19. Then the angel of God, who had been travelling in front of Israel's army, withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved from in front and stood behind them, coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel. Throughout the night the cloud brought darkness to the one side and light to the other side, so neither went near the other all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued them and all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. During the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud at the Egyptian army and threw it into confusion. He jammed the wheels of their chariots so that they had difficulty driving. 
and the Egyptians said, let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at daybreak the sea went back to its place. The Egyptians were fleeing toward it and the Lord swept them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and horsemen, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not one of them survived. But the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. That day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in Moses, his servant. This is the word of the Lord. So our second song this morning is hymn number 228, Lord of the Dance. I danced in the morning when the world was begun And I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun And I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth At Bethlehem I had my birth Dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance, said he And I'll lead you all wherever you may be And I'll lead you all in the dance, said he I danced for the scribe and the Pharisee, but they would not dance and they wouldn't follow me. I danced for the fishermen, for James and John, they came with me and the dance went on. Dance then, wherever you may be, I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all, wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. I danced on the Sabbath and I cured the lame. The holy people said it was a shame. They whipped and they stripped and they hung me up high and left me there on a cross to die. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. I danced on a Friday when the sky turned black. It's hard to dance with the devil on your back. They buried my body and they thought I'd gone, but I am the dance and I still go on. Dance then, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. They cut me down and I leapt up high. I am the life that'll never, never die. I'll live in you if you live in me. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. Dance then, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. And I'll lead you all, wherever you may be. And I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. And now Rosie's going to bring us our second reading. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see all these things, 
you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. This is the gospel of the Lord. And so Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and their left. That's wonderful stuff, isn't it? Wonderful stuff. Um, the question is, of course, though, how um, do we apply the teaching found in the Bible to our own lives? That's always the question we need to ask, because blessed as most of uh, us as we are with stability in the West, it's very unlikely that we're ever going to have to leave slavery in our homeland and escape on chariots through the parted sea. And so what does it mean to us? Well, I believe that there are always always important lessons that we can be learnt from the nature of our faithfulness and rising above the toughest situations, trusting God and looking to the future. And to do this, we always need that most important word, trust. For example, while the Israelites, they lost their faith, Moses faithfully took God at his word and we should take God at his word too. Have you ever found yourself in a desperate situation. Have you ever found yourself in a desperate situation and there seemed to be no way out? There seemed to be no way out. Have you ever felt that you were between a rock and a hard place? Financial problems, health problems, your faith is faltering, your hope is halted. Well, it doesn't matter the size of the situation or the problem because if you have faith, then you are not alone because your problems are God's problems. Your problems are God's problems. And if you are faithful, God will help you. Look at our reading from Exodus um, with the Moses and the Israelites. I mean, they had problems. If you remember from your Sunday school, um, they'd been on the run and they were found themselves in the most desperate situations. They were trapped and they had nowhere to turn. They were caught between Pharaoh and the Red Sea. They were caught in this seemingly impossible situation. And in all our lives, we know this place. We've all been there, not necessarily chased across the desert by Egyptian army and chariots. But there have been times in our lives where we, like the children of Israel, will face our own Red Sea crossing. And then we can look to the example of Moses. The Bible <coughs> urges us, have faith, have faith. If you know the story of Exodus, when Moses and God's people, they arrived at the shores of the Red Sea and they could see the Egyptian army in the distance. They could probably see the sand billowing up. They could hear the horse and they thought they're trapped. They could hear the horses. They could probably hear the cries from the army. And they couldn't see that God had any purpose in this. They couldn't see that God had a purpose in this situation. Their faith in both Moses and in God had actually left them and they panicked. And they panicked and they said to Moses, you, you told us that we should leave. We should have left us where we were. You should have left us in Egypt as slaves. But does this sound familiar? Isn't this how we often feel when we're down? We quickly lose the faith that we spend so much of our lives trying to nurture. We allow our fears to overcome us. And we quickly lose the faith that God has blessed us with. Because just like the Israelites, we give in and we hear our human nature talking. And I stress the word human. At the first sign of danger, the Israelites thought that it would have been better to stay in Egypt as slaves. And when times are tough, when the going gets tough, we often feel we could just go back to the way things were. Back to our old lives. But our old lives will never help us. When I think about my own life growing up, um, it, it was good. It was lovely at times. And I was being blessed to be brought up in a lovely family. And I was adopted, so I was doubly blessed. Um, but wishing when things go wrong that I could go back to my old life to get away from my current problems, that's not going to help. God wants us to trust him and he wants us to face these problems head on. God wants us to have faith. 
Some people see the stories of the Old Testament with enormous miracles as far-fetched in this modern world. But why? Because the God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament and he is the God of now. And God wants you to have faith in him today. That's the important thing. God wants you to have faith in him today. Moses knew this and he knew that God would actually wanted more for his people than simple acceptance of a return to the past. Because God always wants the best for us. We won't cross those red seas in our own lives by constantly looking to the past and wishing that we were still in slavery. God wants the best for us and he will give it to us if we have the faith to simply grab it. Because God is a progressive God. He's a God that has been constantly proving himself to us, taking us through dangers seen and unseen. And he will always continue to do so. So many times we give up, we settle for anything instead of receiving that thing that God really wants for us. And so instead of looking backwards, we need to be faithful like Moses and we need to look to the future and know that God won't let us down. This is what Moses understood for his people and this is what God wants us to understand too. And remember, the crossing of the Red Sea will be for a purpose. The crossings of the Red Sea in our own lives will be for a purpose. Otherwise, God won't bring us that far. And if God can bring you that far, who knows what goodness waits for us on the other side. There is a land of milk and honey. There is a land of milk and honey. Moses looked forward. He never doubted God's promises. And that promise is there for us. It's there in the Bible. It's easy to find. It's actually on every page. God has a way. God always has a way when we only see doubt. And so we look to the Bible. We say it's impossible. It is absolutely impossible. But in Matthew 19, God says all things are possible. We say, oh, I'm just too tired. But in Matthew again, God says, I will give you rest. We say, Nobody really cares for me. One Peter, God says, I care for you. We say, I can't go on. But God says in 2 <coughs> Corinthians, my grace is sufficient. We say, I can't figure things out. I can't figure things out. Proverbs 3, I shall direct thy path. We say, I simply cannot do it. But God says in Philippians 4, you can do all things. We say, I am unable. But God says in 2 Corinthians, I am able. We say, I'm not worth it. Romans 8, it is worth it. We say, no one will forgive me. But in 1 John verse 1, God says, I forgive you. We say, I can't afford it. I cannot afford to do this thing. But in Philippians 4, God says, but I will supply for all your needs. And most crucially, the big one in the Bible. We say, nobody really loves me. John 3, 16, God says, I love you. And that's so important. It's a case of faithfully taking God at his word and then looking for ways of rising above our situation and looking and believing in the future, especially in this world in which we live. When you realise that and when you accept it, it will give you the power to deal with living that you never had before. Moses trusted God. Moses had faith. In verses 30 and 31 of our reading, it says, that day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in Moses, his servant. We are weak. We are weak, but in faith we are strong. We can never cross our Red Seas in our own strength. But if we show faithful trust, that trust shown by Moses, we too will be able to part the waters and we'll be able to walk through to the land on the other side. Amen. And so before Rosie leads us in a time of prayer, let's say together that thing which we believe. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. And now Rosie's going to lead us in a time of prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Lord God, we pray for your church meeting around the world today and for our community of believers here at St Margaret's. We pray for Nigel and our ministry team as they lead and guide us. We pray for our area dean, our archdeacon and our bishop for strength, guidance, peace and wisdom. And Lord, we pray that you would be with us in our APCM this week, that your will be done and that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit, with joy and with peace. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we pray for our world that you would give us all the desire to take care of this wonderful planet. Make us aware of its beauty and fragility and guide those in positions of power to make decisions which will help sustain rather than deplete resources. We pray for the peoples of this world, that they would enjoy equality and live in peace with one another. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we thank you for our families and our friends. We thank you for modern technology which enables us to hear and see them and to keep in touch even though we are apart. We especially pray at this time for communities who cannot welcome their friends and families into their homes. We pray for school staff and children on half term, for their health, safety and well-being and for a restful break. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, your son Jesus can take our burdens and heal our spirits. <coughs> we lift up to you those struggling, needing healing, guidance, peace, practical or financial help. And in a moment of silence, we can name in our hearts or say out loud now anyone we know who needs our prayers at this time. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we pray for those who grieve <coughs> the loss of loved ones. Give to their troubled hearts the light of hope and your strength, peace and comfort. May the souls of the departed rest in eternal peace and rise in glory. Thank you for the love we shared and the precious memories we hold. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, at the start of this new week, make us always ready to do your will. Strengthen our faith, watch over us, guide and protect us and our loved ones, and help us to be bold and courageous Christians, always ready to stand up for justice and for peace. 
Help us to be strong in you and in your mighty power and to stand firm. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are the body of Christ. In one spirit we were all baptised into one body. Let us pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. But for one another a sign of virtual peace. Let's say together. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty. For everything in heaven and earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Then lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and from death. By your Holy Spirit, you make us your friends. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, Send your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, Jesus had supper with his friends. Taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, he shared it with them and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. supper was ended he took a cup of wine again he gave you thanks he shared it and said drink this all of you but this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me and so father as we remember all that jesus did we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your justice and mercy would be seen in all the earth and your kingdom come. Look with favour upon your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to be with you forever at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. And so trusting in the promises of God as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. And so we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. For though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. And so draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you. 
and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. Let's say together the prayer of humble access. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Jesus broken for you. Mm. Body of Jesus broken for you. Blood of Jesus shed for you. Blood of Jesus shed for you. Say together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. 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 So thank you for joining us today. Always a delight. <laughs> it is, it's, it's, it's just nice to know that there are different ways that we can we can come together and do this on a Sunday. Um, very exciting announcement. We have a new PCC secretary. Um, Janet Jeans is going to be the new PCC secretary. I met Janet when I was delivering um, some of the some of the letters, um, and she just randomly asked me for, uh, to come into the back garden for tea. And this is right at the beginning of when we started here and I thought, do you know what, she's tremendous and there was something of a prophetic in that because five months later she's now PCC Secretary and she's got real ambition and, you know, I just think it's going to be, it's going to be great. So food bank this Thursday uh, at the Paris Centre, so it's our monthly food bank collection. Um, obviously things are a little, um, a little, little more fiery than they were with regard to COVID. Um, so please obviously be, be mindful um, in, in, in coming along, um, drive in, drop off, drive out. Resist too much temptation to have a chat, I know it's difficult, but um, if you could that would be fantastic. So the um, thank you to the garden team. A um, load of people turned up and did the garden yesterday. And so the garden looks fantastic, even though it was a little bit drizzly at times. Um, but it looks amazing. And so thank you. You know, it's a, a fantastic thing to come and do on a Saturday morning. You guys are amazing. Uh, this will be the last day that I'm going to ask for coats. Obviously, you can still bring men's coats, men's coats and men's jumpers. Um, ladies, if your husband started wearing that thing that you don't like that he wears every year, stick it in a bag and give it give it away. <laughs> um, but coats and jumpers, um, I'll still take them, but it'll be the last day that I actually ask for them today. We're moving more into trainers and kind of those professional looking walking shoes. That would be fantastic. Um, and also, we're now going to look at children's coats children's coats if you could provide children's coats I say that and I brought this forward slightly um, I, I just had the honour of meeting some of these kids this week and they're so thankful for some of the clothes that they've been given actually made me feel a bit tearful um, and so we're going to bring that as well so as well as trainers for men women and children if we could also look at if you have children's coats of any size if you could start to bring those as well that would be amazing please don't buy some naughty people have been buying things don't buy them but you, some of us will have these things in the house so, so if you can donate and you can give them away that would be absolutely amazing like the food bank please don't feel compelled to do this only if you're able but that would be amazing. Uh, <laughs> 
Wednesday is our APCM. Um, voting forms have been emailed out, which you can vote back. Uh, you can email back to me, or you can pop them through my door, or I could collect them. And there's also a box in the church, and there are some blank uh, voting slips in the church. So if you wanted to vote and kind of shape where we go, that that's there to be done. So so please take advantage of that. Uh, voting is open right until um, the last day so you know we've got we've still got time to do it but obviously today will be the last day if you're coming into church to be able to do it so that would be good also at the back of the church there's a big box of stamps don't put your APCM forms in the stamp box and don't put stamps in the APCM box um, <laughs> it'll just get fiddly um, and also I just want to thank people this week I've had a ton a ton of encouraging emails and letters um, which is fantastic. Honestly, it really, really buoys up myself. It buoys up my wife, um, my family. Absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. You know who you guys are. Absolutely wonderful. Rosie, can you think of any more notices? Nope. Nope. Okay. I, I really would like to be able to sing here, but honestly, I, 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 sadly, I can't. So what we'll do is we'll just finish with a blessing. We'll just finish with a blessing. And so may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. And so go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Apologies about Captain Chaos behind the door, but... Uh, Hey, we wouldn't want it any other way. <laughs> Thank you very much. Have an amazing week, folks.